And uh, the first talk, uh, the title of the first talk is the Interpose Path or IPATH Secure Path Design Against the State of the Art Machine Learning Based Modeling Attacks. So, and the authors of this paper are uh, Fung Kai Nguyen, uh, Cheng. Uh, um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Durga Sahu, Cheng Zhu Li, Khalil Mahmoud, Uli Schumayer, and Martin Van Dyke. And the talk is given by Ha and Cheng Lu. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, today, we are going to talk about our research, the Interpost Path, or IPATH. It is a secure path design against the state of the art machine learning based uh, modeling attack. This work was conducted by Ha, Duga, Chen Lu, Khalil, Uli, and Martin. So, this is the outline of today's presentation. I will start with the motivation of the, our work and then the evolution of the orbital path based the strong path, and then a uh, very important concept for reliability-based machine learning attack, that is short-term reliability, and then we will show you that our understanding of this attack in terms of uh, why this attack works and uh, when it will fail. And uh, based on that key insights, we introduce the design of Interpose Path, and it can be secure against uh, all state-of-the-art machine learning-based uh, attack. So uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with the concept of Path, but so essentially Path is a, a secure a primitive that takes challenge as input and it generates responses as output. And uh, it uh, is based on process variation. That's why it is unique on every single device. And it can be used for device identification, authentication, and key generation. In general, we classify it into two categories. One is weak path, the other is strong path. The difference between these two are the size of challenge response pairs. So if it's very small, then it is uh, weak path. Otherwise, it is strong path. On the, other, on the other hand, when we talk about the attack, then some researchers have proposed some attacks, so we ca classify it into two categories. One is a classical machine learning attack, the other advanced machine learning attack. Essentially, classical machine learning attack exploits the information inside the reliable challenge response pairs, and uh, the advanced machine learning attack exploits the noise information inside the noisy challenge response pairs. And here, the noise is introduced uh, by environmental noise during path evaluation. So based on the uh, existing attack results, we further classify uh, strong path into three categories. One is broken but the lightweight paths, for example, orbital path, XOR orbital paths, and some paths are, uh, have no security proof, so their security is unclear to us, and some path has regular security proof, but it is very large in hardware. So our design philosophy is like that. We want to take XOR of the path as a starting point. Why? Because it is very lightweight. It does not, uh, the security of XOR of the path does not rely on any digital computation or its interface. And it has a very precise mathematical model to describe its behavior. That's why we can use this model to uh, analyze its security very rigorously. And uh, based on the existing results, we know that it is secure against uh, all classical machine learning attack, but it is not, not secure against uh, reliability-based machine learning attack or advanced machine learning attacks. That's why we will build on top of XOR path to introduce interpose path that can be secure against reliability-based machine learning attack. So this is our philosophy and the motivation in this work. So talking about uh, some history that uh, orbital path design is like this, so it essentially compares the delay difference between two paths and uh, based on the comparison result, it generates a response bit either zero or one, and uh, there are many choices of paths, and these paths are determined by its challenge bit. That's why it has an exponentially large challenge response pair space. That's why it is a strong path. But this path has a linear model. That's why it can be easily attacked by uh, machine learning algorithms. So someone proposed to uh, XOR the responses of multiple orbital path instances together to have uh, XOR orbital paths. So this path so far it is secure against all classical machine learning attacks, but it is not secure against reliability-based attack. So this is design of interpose path. It is essentially a composition of XOR orbital paths. It's a, it has two layers of XOR orbital path. The on top layer, so we uh, feed the challenge factor into the top layer XOR orbital path, and then generate one bit response. And this bit response bit will be interposed into the challenge bit, a challenge vector and then fed into the lower XOR of the path and then generate the final response R as the output of IPATH. 
So to compile these three designs, uh, Arbiter Puff essentially uh, needs to rely on the delay difference, which is a delta here, and uh, you will see this delta very frequently later in our presentation. And uh, XO Arbiter Puff also has its pros and cons in terms of security and uh, uh, mathematical models. And the interpose Puff, so we developed uh, one formula to map the behavior of IPuff to the behavior of XO Arbiter Puff. So the formula is described over there. And uh, this, this formula is super important to us because with using this formula, we are able to map all the existing security result of XRB path to IPath. So we don't need to deal with all classical machine learning attack anymore. We only need to solve or defend against the reliability based machine learning attack. So we need to understand the concept of short term reliability. What this mean? What does this mean? It means that uh, given a Puff and a challenge, you can measure the challenge many, many times and get the many, many responses, and then you can calculate the, its uh, reliability. And uh, if one challenge is very reliable, then we see that the challenge has a, a delay difference delta, which is very far away from zero, so it is not very sensitive to the environmental noise. And uh, if, it's, uh, if the challenge is not very reliable or noisy, it means that the delta is very close to zero, and uh, it can be easily flipped uh, from zero to one or one to zero. So this leaks information of delta. That's why we are able to exploit such information to attack uh, up the path or XO up the path. And now I will introduce you how to exploit such information to attack. Yeah, thank you, Chen Lu, for the first part. Uh, my name is Ha, and I'm going to explain you about the most powerful attack, uh, I mean modeling attack on XR Python Pop, or known as the Becker attack, and uh, explain why the IPOP can defeat the Becker attack. Uh, there are several important points we need to know to understand about the Becker attack. The first one is uh, we can describe the behavior of a Python Pop instance uh, using the de linear delay model. So then, what does it imply? It implies that as the adversary, he needs to care how to find the vector W. Uh, the second one is uh, the CMIES algorithm is used in the background attack. Uh, so this is the heuristic uh, modeling uh, algorithm. It has many generations or iterations, like we can see in the uh, slide. Uh, each iteration, uh, many approximated model W hat, uh, are generated, and somehow the adversary can measure the similarity between the uh, approximated models and the target model. Uh, the good approximated models are used to generate the next generation. Um, keep doing this process, uh, uh, eventually we can have a really well, we may have a really well approximated model, like we can see uh, in the slide at the generation six. Uh, and the third one is we have to understand how we can perform the backer attack on the better pub because the backer a better pub just directly apply the CMIES attack on a better pub to the actual a better pub without any uh, modification. This is really uh, surprising things uh, in my opinion. And, and it is very powerful. Why? Because it can help you to build a model for every uh, a better pub instance uh, separately. It makes the backer attack very different from the classical machine learning attack where uh, all the model of a better pop have to build at the same time. So for a given a better pop, the adversary uh, need to collect the, the set of the challenge response pair like Q we can see over there. Uh, based on the information, reliability information for each challenge, it split the Q into two subsets, the noisy one and the reliable one. Uh, the the set of the Q and the noisy and the reliable set, is very, uh, they are very important uh, because it helps us to measure the similarity between the approximated model and the target model, like we can see here. Uh, so for a given model, the, more, the given model is the epsilon one and the W hat one. We can build its own uh, noisy and reliable set uh, based on the challenge information uh, and the epsilon, like we can see in the slide. 
So this is how we can measure the similarity between the approximated model and the target model. We can do it for every approximated model, uh, and then we do know uh, what are the good approximated model and what are the bad one. We discard the bad one, keep the good one, generate the next generation, keep doing this process. Uh, eventually, we, get a, we may get a really well approximated model. And actually, uh, the attack worked really well uh, in the experiment, in the real attack. Uh, like I mentioned you uh, before, uh, Becker can uh, uh, build a model for every operator pop instance in the actual operator pop separately uh, by just applying the Becker attack on the operator pop without any modification. So the point here is there is no theory developed to explain why Becker attack work and, and how we can defeat the attack. Actually, it took us like uh, more than three years to understand and develop the design. Um, okay, so to understand uh, the Becker attack, the very important point we have to remember, the first one is if a better pop uh, is noisy, then the extra output uh, is also noisy. So what does it imply? It implies that uh, the reliable set of the extra better pop QR is shared among all operator pop instances. The second one is the noisy set QN of XOR operator pop is always larger than the noisy set of operator pop. Like we can see in the slide. Uh, okay, now we uh, have the following analysis for the Becker attack on the XOR operator pop. Uh, suppose that we have 10 XOR operator pop and the Q10 is the largest noisy set uh, like we can see in the picture. The first one is uh, on the model, on the approximated model in the CMIES are the model of a better pop. This is the first one. The second one is approximated model can only convert to a better pop instances. The third one is by its nature, CMIES maximize the matching or the similarity uh, Q of the approximated model and the Q of the actual a better pop. Put everything together, it implies that the CMAES has to uh, convert to the operator pop 10 because the Q of operator pop 10 is the best representative of the Q of the actual operator pop, like we can see uh, in the slide. So if we change the Q, now the Q3 may become the largest uh, noisy set. And, and now the CMAES will convert to the a better pop three. So by this way, we can build a model for on a better pop instance in the actual a better pop separately. Okay, to make uh, to make the Becker attack fail, it is very easy. We can implement the majority voting at the end of the output uh, a better pop zero in two actual a better pop, like we described in the slide. Clearly, that now the Q zero is always smaller than the Q one. So what does it imply? It implies that the uh, Becker attack cannot build a model for the operator pop zero, but it can build a model for the operator pop one. What does it imply? It implies that now we do know how to defeat the Becker attack, but, the, but this type of the design is not secure. So we have to come up with the, the IPOP. This is why uh, we are here. So uh, the IPOP can defeat the Becker attack because of the following reason. The first one is, we can prove that the information of a better pop instances in the actual better pop presented at the IPOP output is less compared to the a better pop instances in the Y actual better pop. What does it imply? It implies that the Becker attack cannot build a model for any a better pop instances in the actual a better pop. The second reason is it cannot compute uh, the noisy set and the reliable set for a given approximated model. Because why? Because it cannot compute the delta. Why? Because it cannot compute uh, the, the output of the X XOR operator pop. Now put everything together, we do understand why the IPOP can defeat the Becker attack. And surprisingly, the design is very simple one. We do not need to use any interface, nothing. And we can prove that uh, the 
iPod can defeat the all known classical machine learning attack. And now we also show that it can defeat the backdoor attack as well. So in our paper, we also have many uh, other contribution, like we propose the enhanced backdoor attack. We also prove that uh, the logistic regression uh, modeling attack on XOP pop is the best attack. And it is not applicable to the iPod. So what does it imply? It implies that uh, maybe we have less number of operator pop instance in the iPod compared to the one we propose in our paper, in the current paper. Uh, we also public the, I mean the FPGA implementation code for the Arpeta Pop, XR Pop, uh, MI Pop. We also public the uh, attack algorithms, uh, and yeah, and we also have the detailed tutorial online. So this slide concludes our talk. We have two things to remember. The first one is we understand how the macro attack works. And we also propose a new lightweight puff design, uh, which secure again on the state of the art of the modeling attack. Thank you for your attention. Uh, we are open uh, for your question. So we have time for one or two questions. Is there any question? No? Does X and Y have any difference? Can you run the same function and just do rounds? Uh, so, sorry, I cannot hear you clearly. Can, can X and, does X and Y, they need to be different? Uh, can you not do rounds with just having one or better puff X? Uh, sure, we can. Actually, in our paper, we promote that X should be one. And uh, Y can, should be nine. But actually, we may have like X equal to one and nine may be equal to six or seven. You okay? No, I, I think what he asked is that can we reduce X, uh, X or other puff as the lower layer, right? So essentially, we cannot because the size of challenge input is different. See, the first, uh, the upper layer, it takes n bit input, and the lower layer there it takes n plus one bit input. You can always design n plus one input for x and simply tie it to a constant for the first round. And then you can have two rounds. Yeah, might be, but in our uh, suggested parameter, we don't consider that the x and the y should be equal x. Actually, you just x just needs to be greater than one, and the y is where really security comes from. Because you can also see our uh, formula between i path and x half path. Then you can see that the uh, the equivalence is that uh, this is the formula is like y plus x over two. So essentially, all security comes from the lower layer. Any other question? Okay, then let's thank the speaker again.